Hi guys, welcome to Geekism, my name's John T and here's my top 10 pro tips for building in Planet Coaster. A few of these tips have already cropped up in my videos, a few of them have come from places like Facebook and Reddit, and a few of them are things I've just found whilst building, but I hope there's at least one or two in there that you've not seen before that you can apply to your Planet Coaster creations. So here we go! When placing down items such as windows, or other wall based items, if you hold down the F key, it'll place them perfectly in the centre of each wall piece and you get really nice lined up windows. This also works on floors and other scenery pieces. Just hold down the F key and it'll line them up to the centre of the square. Excelente! Pretty much every item in the game is split to a grid or non-grid item. You can tell because some of them will have a white background and some of them will have a gridded background and if they're gridded background it means they're gridded items. If it's a grid item it means placing down the first one will create the grid and any other grid item will have to sit on that grid until you come out of that building. And if you place a non-grid item, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. You can have it on the floor there, or you can have full X rotation uh, by pressing the X key and you can place them all over the place and do whatever you like. Once you've placed a grid item down, any other grid items have to sit on the grid and no matter what they are, but any non-grid items can go wherever they like and you can make weird modern art. If you've made a building with some scenery that goes alongside it but the scenery isn't connected to the building because you've placed it on the floor nearby, if you select them with the multi-select tool there is a button that says add uh, spare scenery to building. If you click that it now all acts as one piece. Very useful. Mm, tasty. Indeed. If you create a piece of scenery that you're going to repeat a lot, such as a fence or a lamppost, if you create it just out of scenery pieces there's no way to easily duplicate it. What you'd have to do is save it as a blueprint and then keep going to the blueprint menu to place it back down again. But you can duplicate buildings. So if when you're building these pieces you start with a building piece, it classes as a building. So if you go into walls, scroll down to columns, you'll find a one meter high column with a grid background this is the perfect piece to start off these buildings with. If you drag it down into the ground, so you just about can't see it, then any scenery that now goes on while you're within the grid will be classed as part of the building. Quickly place down a couple of bits here to show you. And now because of that building piece, you can click this, select it as a building and press Ctrl and D to duplicate it. Then all you have to do is drag it so that the building piece is back under the ground. Extremely useful for creating fences and other things that you're going to be duplicating a lot. It can often be difficult to select scenery pieces using the multi-select tool when there's a lot of scenery around that you don't want. See here I can always struggle to get the bush in the or tree in the background there but it actually is another option that's click or drag to add to scenery. If you select that one all you have to do is left click on the pieces you want and they'll all be selected without having to click and drag and you can use control to deselect them as well very handy. I'm sure you'll know by now that if you select an item and press Control X you can then duplicate the item on the X axis. Uh, if you don't have a look at the building tutorial above. But did you know that if you select Control X and then select a different item from the scenery it'll place that item over the top exactly on the X axis as well. This is very useful for making objects that use uh, rotational symmetry such as this fountain here. Good job buddy! If you're adding floor pieces to interiors, you can often get some nasty Z fighting on the walls on the outside. This can often, but not always, be fixed. To try and see if you can fix it, select the wall piece, press M to move it, Z a couple of times to rotate, and place it back again. And you'll see, for the most part, when you rotate walls, they'll get rid of the, uh, get rid of the floors like that. Mmm, lovely. Here's a cool terrain tip that might be useful when you're building. If you're selecting either push or pull terrain, if you hold down the control key, it'll do the opposite. So here we've got push, uh, pull selected, but if we hold down control, it'll, uh, it'll push or pull. I forget which one was which now. Anyway, much more useful than having to select back and forth on the terrain tab. What the hell am I making? When working with paths and kind of trying to get them to join on, you get these weird sort of kinks in them. You press the Z key, you get a lovely smooth fork in the road. Mmm, look at that. Unfortunately, when trying to make stairs, they all work as a 4 meter grid, and sometimes they can be a little wide. It'd be nicer if you can do them a little bit shorter. Luckily, you can. If you select a shop, place it where you'd like the stairs, and lift it up a little, 
you'll find that the path automatically builds some little stairs up to it. it. Takes a little time to line it up, but there you go. If you then delete the shop, the stairs will stay, and if you go back into the path tool, you can carry on building from them, giving you some nice short stairs. This is technically a glitch though, so don't be surprised if it gets patched in the future, but if you're watching Frontier, please don't. So there you go, hope you've enjoyed it, hope you've learnt something, and if you can think of a tip that I haven't mentioned here, please put it down into the comments. Thanks very much for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed it, it really does help out the channel, and if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.